Hey everybody, I had a phone call come in and somehow that ended my video and I didn't even realize I wasn't not recording anymore so I'm gonna pick up where I left off. So, um, I was saying how, you know, um, at this whole passage is, is talking about substance abuse. Um, it's just not good for your whole being, okay? Your body, your soul, your spirit, your domain. Um, you're bringing death to yourself and to those around you. And that's, so as we continue on, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men who rule, <clears throat> who rule this people who are in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol we are in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies, <clears throat> excuse me, we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves." I really wish my video didn't get cut off before because I really was on a roll in the Holy Spirit, but here we are. Um, so, they have made a covenant with death. <clears throat> they are in agreement with Sheol, which is a section of hell, for those who don't know. Um, scourge is a noun. It's referring to, like, a, a whip of punishment. Um... And it's and so it this so this passage is saying that people who walk in in this lifestyle and this mentality, they lie to themselves and say it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves. So what this really is just referring to is how um, those who walk in folly. In the ways of the world, really in wickedness, and I know that's going to be offensive, but that's really what it comes down to. Um, those who walk in a alcoholic or addictive, you know, like just those who walk in a in a way where they're not earnestly pursuing and seeking Jesus and seeking the deliverance that He can bring. From such mentalities and addictions and all that. Um, if you've ever really studied a narcissist, an alcoholic, which usually are one and the same, um, this is exactly what you will observe. Is that they have this covenant. It's like a sacred covenant with death. With foolishness. With um, irrationality. So again, in my previous videos, I've talked about how evil is the epitome of irrationality. Um, and um, I'm going to use my ex as an example because it's just the best example I, I've ever come across. There were times where it got to the point where I was studying, like he was so abusive that I was trying to figure out how to fix him, right? Doing the whole codependent thing, which um, I'm done with that, <laughs> thank God, but... Uh, but, but the Lord used that whole, that relationship and that whole process to teach me a lot about evil and demons and just deliverance and just all, all this stuff. But anyway, it got to the point where I wouldn't even like take what he said and did so personal because I realized it wasn't about me. It was just like his own demonic stuff going on. And... I actually confronted him because not just what he lied to me, but I, I began to realize he was lying to himself. There were many occasions where I realized that he was actually deceiving himself, which was just like amazing to me. I mean, I, I, I don't comprehend why people, I mean, I do now, like, in terms of, like, spiritual reasoning, like, you know, like, what, you know, what causes all that and everything, but, like, it never made any rational sense to me, because, because it doesn't make rational sense. It's not rational to lie to anybody else, and especially yourself, but that's what these people do. So, if you study anybody, or if, if you're the person who is given to drunkenness, again, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm just bringing this, this word forth that the Lord told me to bring forth. There is hope for you. You can be delivered. <clears throat> um, but 
that's, I mean, that's part of repentance is examining yourself. So if you're this person, if, if you're the person getting intoxicated or whatever, or for those of you who know someone who is, examine yourself or, you know, examine them. Are you deceiving yourself? Now, you may have to ask the Holy Spirit of Jesus the Christ to reveal this to you. Because usually if, you're, if people who are deceiving themselves, they're so... Oh, they're so complexly in bondage. They're so blinded to how deceived they are. They can't see it. They can't perceive it. They can't comprehend it. So you may need to go to Jesus, you know, on a meta level in the first place and just initiate the process and say, Lord, if I'm deceiving myself, if I am so much in agreement with lies, if I've made vows, you know, whatever, Will you please reveal it to me? If I'm deceiving myself in any way, shape, or form, will you please reveal that to me in a way that I can't deny it? If you ask that of the Lord, if you earnestly mean it and you persist in asking him that, I advise pray, uh, fasting, um, he will. He'll reveal it to you. God loves it when we seek him, when, when we seek to know truth, when we seek our deliverance. He loves that because he wants, he takes joy in liberating us, in delivering us, okay? But anyway, th th this is what this is talking about. This passage, these few lines here at the end of, of this passage. Covenant with death, agreement with Sheol, they've made lies their refuge. This is what people do. They lie to themselves and... With, with, like, narcissists, you will particularly see this, like, big time. But I'm starting to realize, like, the majority of people are at least on, like, the light end of narcissism these days. Um, people will just lie to themselves, like, you know, oh, everything's great, everything will be fine, or, you know, whatever. Like, a comical example, um, I don't know, like a, like a week or two ago... I was having this conversation with uh, my housemate. It wasn't a long conversation and it didn't go deep because he didn't allow it to because he doesn't want to think about it. Um, but we were talking about the rapture. And I was trying to explain to him, I was trying to open his eyes that, okay, the end has begun. The tribulation or tribulations or whatever has begun. Um, and I was trying to, like, plant seeds that, like, pre, pre-trib rapture is not, you know, the truth. And he kept trying to change the subject, and then he finally said, Oh, well, the, the Lord can just take me, and he chuckled. And that was his way of, like, deflecting the entire conversation, the entire topic, okay? Like, that's a small example of someone deceiving themselves, Okay. Um, there's definitely bigger, deeper examples than that. Um, like my ex, my ex, I forget what it was exactly, but he had done something to me that was like horrifically abusive. And months or years later when it came up, like it was discovered that he actually, um, lied to himself that he did not do that. And he believed it. He actually believed his own lie to himself that, oh, I didn't do that to April. Like, and so, I mean, it, it can go really, really deep. And it really is, like, amazing for those of us who aren't in that mentality on the outside looking in. Like, it is baffling. It is amazing. But, like, people lie to themselves. They really do. Um... And so, um, whether you are abiding in Christ or whether you are a narcissist or an alcoholic, there's hope for everybody. His name is Jesus. You can be delivered. You can be liberated. Jesus' mission statement is here in Isaiah, what, 60? Let me find it. And it's one we've all heard, or most of us have heard, unless you're a a newcomer to Christianity, but here, let's see, 
Was it 60 or 61? Do, 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 61, maybe. Yep, okay. Here it is. This is Jesus' mission statement that he himself, this is the first time, um, I think it's in the book of Luke, when Jesus began his ministry, this is what he quoted. Isaiah 61, the spirit of the, of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. That is Jesus' mission statement, okay? This is the heart of God. He wants to liberate you. He wants to comfort and console you and bring you into freedom, okay? Now, I know a lot of us enjoy our sin. I can relate to that. I can relate to having a sin knowing it's wrong, but enjoying it so much that I'm not motivated or barely motivated to repent of it. But that's where you got to go to Jesus and say, Lord, give me more of your Holy Spirit. Give me more conviction. Motivate me to want to repent of this sin. Remove my desire. Remove my enjoyment. And you know what? If you go to God with that posture of heart and make those requests, he will gladly oblige you. Okay, I can speak firsthand experience myself. And I'm, I'm a transparent person. I'm, I'm, I'm an open book. There's almost nothing that I won't just lay out there. That's just how I am. I'm not really ashamed of anything. I, it is what it is. Um, the biggest thing for me, like the biggest sin I think I've ever overcome is masturbation. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that sin. And I struggled with that for a few years. <clears throat> I had a lot of distractions going on as well, which didn't help. Um, but it got to the point where I just said, Lord, remove this. Make it so that I don't enjoy this. Da -da -da. And that's exactly what happened. It got to the point where, like, I would do it, wouldn't even enjoy it. Like, I would feel more convicted about it, you know. And so, like, these are the things that we have to do. We have to take the initiative in our relationship with the Lord and go to him and say, Lord... You and I both know I have this sin. I have this pet sin that I really enjoy. I need your Holy Spirit to come help help me chop it down at the root. To pull it out by its roots. You need to ask him what is at the root. What, uh, what lies, as this passage is saying, what covenants have you made? What agreements have you made? What vows have you made? have you made? What lies are you believing? What lies are you partnering with, agreeing with? What lies are you telling yourself? Okay. Oh. All right. I got to get going. Um, hopefully I can figure out how to put these two together. If not, it'll be a part one, part two. Um, but this is something that the Lord put on my heart while I was sleeping that he wanted me to cover this and um, I do believe that this really was from from him because the Holy Spirit just flowed throughout all of this so of course the enemy came and tried to interrupt but see I didn't pray against it I didn't pray against the interruption I gotta I gotta do that all right anyway um, I hope this was edifying to somebody and um, again I am not condemning anybody. There is hope for you. You can be delivered. It's just a matter of whether you want that. Whether you pursue Jesus. Whether you pursue his deliverance. And uh, I think, as I've done in a few other videos, I'll put what I call the prayerful steps to freedom in the, des in the description boxes. If this ends up being two videos. Um... You can, be, you can be freed. You can be liberated from alcoholism, drug addiction, 
whatever your hang up is, okay, whatever your pet sin is, pornography, masturbation, incest, bulimia, anorexia, uh, I mean, whatever, whatever it is, you can be liberated. That is why Jesus came. Okay, that is why God put himself into our realm of having skin, of having flesh. His heart is to liberate us. He loves us. He loves you. Alright, I gotta get going. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I will, uh... Well... I'm sure I'll be making more videos. I'm pretty sure of that. All right. Anyway, bye. <laughs>